Hey guys, your boy Chill here. Welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Ah, that's just too much of a mouthful. Welcome back to Chill. That's what we're going to call it from now on. In this video, we're going to be making a system for creating and controlling application windows. So this is going to be a fun time. Uh, one little disclaimer before we get started. This is not an, you know, this is like a baby's first Windows API kind of deal. It's not a tutorial about the Windows API specifically, because I've already gone over that. So if you are lost because you don't understand the Windows API and you're watching this, feel free to search. You'll find my videos here. The first 10 videos in this playlist are all about that. I break it all down. Very easy to understand, probably. I don't know. But we're not going to be rehashing all that stuff in this video. We want to keep things moving. We want to keep rolling. So let's get started here. We're going to create our folder. That is going to be our new namespace. All the Windows stuff is going to live in here. And the first thing we got to create is our wrapper around the Windows.h because we want to specify the version of Windows and we want to disable a bunch of garbage. So now instead of including Windows.h, wherever we would do that, we instead include chillwin.h. Now, before we create a window itself, we have to register what is called a window class. So in the win namespace, we include chillwin because we need it for all this window stuff. And then we create our window class interface. The two main things you do with a window class is you get basically a reference to the class in order to create windows. So we get a little function here to get the atom, which is like the reference to the class after it's been registered. And also this H instance thing is needed for creating windows. So here's our basic interface. Concrete implementation looks like this, pretty much the same stuff that you would expect from this interface, except for these callback functions, which I will go into a little bit of detail, even though I've explained them in previous uh, tutorials. I'll just do a quick overview, a quick review of them again, because it's, it's a little complicated. So there's the implementation stuff. It's pretty straightforward. The constructor registers the class, the destructor is going to unregister the class, and then you can get at the atom, which is the thing you get back when you register the class. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, the most important things are the window procedure that gets associated with all the windows of this class. You can, uh, you can customize a little bit with this style, but we don't really mess with it that much. And I guess when we, have, when we get custom icons in the future, we'll add that ability to the framework. We'll have to do a little bit in here, but this is just very basic default stuff. Uh, now, here's the important part, the actual window procedure. So this is where Windows messages will get dispatched from your message loop. Here's where you'll handle things that are happening to your window. Now, because this is passed into the Windows API as a callback, it can't be a member function. It has to be a, like a static function or a global function. And that's what we have here. But there's a mechanism built into Windows that you are intended to use where you can set some of your own user data into a window instance, and then you can pull that back whenever you're handling a message. So that's what we do in this function. This function is all about taking in, when you create a window, you can pass it a, one piece of data and you'll get that in this event here, which is an NC create event, non-client region creation. Uh, so when you get this message, we are going to take that pointer and we're going to squirrel it away into user data. So we set this value in the Windows user data. Now, once we've set that up once, we don't have to set it up again. So we actually don't need this code anymore. So then the next thing we do is we change the Windows procedure so that subsequent messages will instead be processed by this function, which is much you know smaller and simpler. So essentially the flow is someone's going to create a window when they create it, they're going to pass in a pointer to their window object. That is going to come in through here, and we are going to associate it with the, the actual window in the Windows API. And this way, we can use that Windows object to process the message, because then every individual window is going to have its own data associated with it. And instead of having one global function that has to manage all those windows, each window instance handles its own messages if we use this method. And this will be very useful if we want to play around with multiple window setups, which I do want to play around with. 
Now there's one very clear thing missing from here. It's the uh, the window interface, right? So we're not going to create the window itself. We're not going to implement it in this video, but we need a like a basic interface so that we can define how window class interacts with it. All right, so here's our bare bones I window interface. All it really defines here is the handle message function which is going to be used to dispatch and handle Windows messages. Notice that it's a virtual function, it's not a static function, so it is going to be per window instance. And we're going to make iWindowClass a friend here. We're going to do something because this function, we're going to make it protected because no one should be able to just call handle message just randomly. It should only be able, it should only be used to handle messages coming in from the API. So we make it protected, but Windows class needs access to it in order to dispatch those messages from the static function. And you see when we create I window here, it's mostly happy except here. So I've got a function here, forward message. And you might be saying, well, Chili, why isn't this handle message? Well, let's, let's see what happens when we try to do handle message. So we do P W N D pointer to handle message. And it doesn't like it. Why not? because it's inaccessible, right? It's protected. We gave friendship privileges to iWindow class, but that doesn't extend to iWindow class's children. So how do we solve this? It's very simple. So we had a protected static function to iWindow class called forward message. And all it's gonna do is it's going to call handle message on the iWindow pointer and so I window class is allowed to do that, so that's no problem. But because it's protected, now the children of this one can call this one to get access to handle message. You might say, Chili, this is a little bit of hanky panky, isn't it? But I mean, it's not really. And it is worth it to keep stuff out of the public interface of iWindow. The more you clutter that interface, the more difficult it is for end users and programmers to figure out what they need to be using and it's more easier for them to use things that they're not supposed to use inadvertently and just mess the system up. So the more we can keep out of that public interface, the better, and this is just a much cleaner approach. And it's it's free because this is going to be in line. It's just a static function. So it's in the end, it's going to be the same as if this were public and called directly. So with that forward message function in place, now this will work, let's revert it. So your forward message is being called and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be all good. We're gonna, again, when we get this create message, there is LP create params. We recover the pointer to the window instance. We set that in our data. And then we set this one as the handler for future messages. And we also forward this message to our window in case they want to handle the NC create message for some reason. Usually you don't. But subsequent messages will come in here. Again, we will retrieve the pointer to our window object and then forward the message to that object to be handled. Let's keep our, uh, our coding style consistent here. We'll put some underlines in here. I always I always forget the damn underlines, you know? All right, that should be better. I need one here as well. Okay, so this should be good. This should be everything we need for a window class to start off with at least. This logical knot is not supposed to be in there yet, but it will come in soon. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we could test this, but the problem is, is even if we like construct and deconstruct it, we're not checking if any of these functions succeed. So it wouldn't even be like a really good test. What we need now is some error checking and error handling. But let's just write some code in here before we end the video, just to make sure that it compiles at least. So we'll try to create a window class here. Um, the parameters, you can give it a custom name, but normally we'll just give it whatever default name that I put in there. The name doesn't matter, we're going to be referring to it by its Adam, which is like its handler, handle. So if this builds, then we'll call it good for now, and we'll do a better test after we've implemented some, you know, error handling. And it did build, so that's it. 
In the next video, we're gonna look at some air handling and depending on time, I might even throw in a few more utilities that we're gonna need. Uh, until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more chill.